To draw the Bulbasaur well, we need to start from the outer structure of the Bulbasaur. So starting from his head, you know, his ears and his body lines, and that would be kind of the center of your drawing because, you know, this structure is going to stay with your entire drawing. The first 10% of the time that you spend on your sketching will be the most critical 10% of time because you are designing the structure and you have to think about where is the surrounding. Is it is the bubble saw sitting on the lawn? Is it sitting on a table? Is it standing? Is it playing? And the most critical thing of sketching a person or an animal in this case is really the face. How you want to center and structure the face or the head of the animal or the person that you join is going to determine on how you can structure the rest of the body. And that would decide the size of the entire sketch that you're going to have. And also it decides the, the body parts that you join and the body parts that you have to make to kind of fit to the similar or reasonable dimension of the head. Now we're adding shadows into different parts of the Bulbasaur's body. And just think about how the light would reflect and how the light would shine upon different parts of the body depending on how close the body parts is to you, the far and the closer part, and also, you know, the bigger and different angles of the body parts. This actually requires your observations on regular daily items um, across your own living space on how the light is getting reflected. And, you know, it takes um, some practice and some observation to get why it is designed this way. The actual Bulbasaur would actually have red eyes with white pupils. So you can actually color this after the sketching that way if you want. For example, the part in between his front legs and his um, body or chest is kind of darker because think about how the light would shine on the front legs and then there would be a shadow um, caused by the front legs. And when we draw each of its thick legs, make sure they all end with three sharp claws. And here in between his hind legs and the front uh, forearms, uh, there's a darker shadow because obviously that's also a shadow caused by the front legs uh, standing in between the, the body and the hind legs. So just think about how those uh, shadows can be effectively used to kind of uh, depict the depth of the object and it also gives the um, feeling of the 3D dimension as well for the object that you're trying to draw. On his left leg, even though it also has three sharp claws, but from this angle, we'll only be able to see two of them. And therefore, that's how we join. And just remember that from a different angle, you also show things differently. Also, the Bulbasaur usually has some pointed teeth that are visible in his upper jaw when his mouth is open. You can use the white Posca pen to add the shines to um, the pupils. Don't miss the darker patches um, that are across his skin. It's actually quite visible on any of the bowl saws that you see. Now we're getting to his back. And notice his back is a green plant bulb, which is kind of grown from a seed planted there at birth of the Bulbasaur. And um, the bulb also conceals two slender tentacle-like vines and provides the Bulbasaur with energy 
through uh, photosynthesis as well as from the nutrient rich seeds contained within as well. Bulbasaws are usually found in grasslands and forests throughout the Cantal region. So this is the surrounding that we're trying to imagine that this Bulbasaw is sitting on. Also the shadow on the grass pad that the Bulbasaw is sitting on needs to be extra dark because he's sitting on that and therefore it would have a heavy shadow. Now we're giving the dimensions to each of the petal or the leaves of the plant and notice in the very middle it has to be darker because part of that is being covered by the rest of the leaves and therefore it will reflect the light differently. 